We have since sat around and showcased the all-new reworked Winona, went about and pitted mechanical know-how against the many forces of the numerous big bads of the constant, but what if we dialed it back for a moment and focused on the simpler things, like using our new toys to murder not towering beasts, but all the other cannon fodder around? Cause that's right, today we cycle through not all, but many of the other mobs that call the constant home, just to see if Winona's catapults makes handling them all the more easy-like. But before we head off to murder us some innocent creatures, I will say that the setups you will see are not set in stone, and that includes everything from the number of catapults to their positioning, the placement of the walls or layouts of the mobs, and even just the generators used. Farming techniques are personal, so make them your own. But let's begin, and we will start off with Bunnymen and all their carrot much and glory. Like our other farm that you've seen before, using meat in your inventory is not only the quickest way, it's the easiest and safest way to draw their aggro and move them into position. Once they're in place, it becomes a slaughterhouse, as bunnies will drop like flies in seconds. However, there will be times when there are stragglers about that need repositioning. That, or the bunnies will actually have a window to flee once their health drops low enough. But, they'll eventually return and meet the same fate as their friends. When time, use yourself a hammer to break a single fossil, and you got your in. Now, it's just time for Spacebar Simulator, really. If you've seen my other farm, you'll notice some changes right off the bat. With no need for dwarf stars and the junk required to have constant smoldering occur, you are completely free to collect every bit of loot available if you use this method. Furthermore, this route keeps you safer overall, as there is no need to kill the bunnies yourself meaning far less to no damage taken over the prior method. Make note, you can choose to help a bit with killing them, but that is a really bad idea. However, it does bring us to the negative side of this particular method, no Krampus. Since you're not technically killing the bunnies yourself, your naughtiness doesn't rise, and with no naughtiness, there is no Krampus potential. So it's up to you, really. You'll still get a farm that could potentially operate every single day with a considerable amount of food as a reward, with less hassle than the other method, mind you. But you don't get the potential grand prize from potential Krampi. Your choice. But in a very, very similar vein, we have new pig farming methods. Well, kind of as we still look to keep them fixated on eating some juicy butts. But our farming arena has a new look. It's still wise to contain them in the back and side so they don't go wandering away. But once again, fossil walls to the rescue. Most mobs cannot pass through them. And thankfully, that includes our porky companions here. When you're ready, give one a punch and the farm is on. Once again, all that's really needed from you is patience, as the catapult will do all the work. But you notice how, occasionally, the turrets all but stop? That's because the game registers your first initiation of combat, but then realizes later that you yourself stopped and don't continue to fight. Because of this, your turrets stop flinging stone and you need to reinitiate combat at times, but only with certain mobs. The ones that aren't always hostile, that is. But I preach it all the time. Killing and farming normal pigmen is useless and a waste of potential. What we really want is what comes from the dawning of the full moon. pigs. All our friends will transform under the moonlight, but still have the insatiable lust for butts, making it so they will not go about eating our loot when others die. But why pigs? Werepigs drop a guaranteed pig butt and two meat every time. So, the more the merrier, obviously, and this method allows for the player to remain away from the pigs themselves, meaning no damage taken and no sanity drain. And that still rewards full loot potential without player intervention. 
The old methods are still great and viable, but if you're looking for the biggest bang for your buck, this one might be the way to go. But what about hounds? You betcha, especially if you have a hound mound fortress spawn somewhere. I'll tell you what though, you don't need as many fossil fragments as I have here. Just pick a side for them, make a decently long line of them, and then fill in the rest with normal walls if you will. Is it efficient though? Well, sure. If you're okay with losing a piece of meat here and there and having to wait for them to respawn, but their spawns are infinite regardless, as long as the mounds are alive. So the wait could be considered worth it. Besides, you can always just run around and draw the others down towards their stony death while you wait for them anyway. Just be mindful of where you sit, or you may get munched, and I'd be aware of the potential for the mounds to be in range of your catapults before building, as you may end up destroying one or two while doing this method, meaning less hounds for you to farm. But there is another way. A far more complicated way, mind you. But it begins with a telelocator focus. Make one or two, socket the gems in the pillars, and wall them off as you see here. Then, nab yourself a telelocator staff as well, as you can't do this without one, as you need to hunt us down one of these beautiful creatures, a varg. It's a big old fluff ball, but it's the king of the hounds. So, hit it with a telelocator staff, and you'll come to find the beast locked up and ready to roll. Now, here's how vargs work. As long as they are alive and aggroed, they will constantly spawn hounds at a very fast rate. And that's where the farming kicks in. I went ahead and used end tables this time to show you yet another way to block out mobs out there. But be careful, it isn't always foolproof. With this, the hounds will keep on coming and you'll keep on killing them. Make sure the Vargs themselves, though, are out of range. You don't want them dead or else this ain't gonna work. Why the Flingo? Well, Firehounds can spawn from Vargs on occasion, and that's just a recipe for disaster. Just make sure it's fueled, unlike what I keep on doing lately. It's Spooter time, and it's the easiest and most efficient farm around, I'd say. Wait till dusk, hit one, and the party arrives in droves over and over again. You can either make your own tier 3 nest area, or use the world gen to your advantage with a potential queen's gathering set piece. The farm is really straightforward, but do keep in mind once more that you do not need as many fossils as I have. You may lose some meat now and then, and the warrior spiders can sometimes jump their way over the wall if they are getting a little push from behind. Oh. And you may have visitors from other nests come to say hello on occasion too. Also, you may forget about a queen's range and end up dead so like me. So always be aware of where you are standing when doing any of these farms, as mobs can hit over the walls just like you. But no worries though, queens cannot get over the wall either and will be melted shortly. Then, you can just use the spider eggs they drop to add even more web slingers to the mix. Now this is a farm done right. But I seem to be hungry for some beef. How about you? So piss them off, run them to your setup, and have a front row seat to the slaughter. A very simple method, and one that doesn't require the use of any of the big bads to do your dirty work like we normally do. That, and it saves you any hassle having to lure only a couple away over and over again so you don't piss off the herd. With Winona's catapults, it is fast, efficient, and far more safe than doing it alone. But I must mention though, like the pigment, beef do lose interest too. So some of your catapults may stop flinging now and then unless you initiate combat again. So, lure as many as you please and your turns will make quick work of them. But always remember to keep tabs on your herds. If you kill them all, that's no more beef flow in your world. And that's no good. If you've been around a while, you know I love me some tall bird fortress farming methods. And the new catapults make things interesting. One is now automatic, with no real threat to you 
nor any actual work needing to be done, as you don't need to kill each one individually. Two, it requires far less resources, as you don't need to pen off each individual nest with walls. And finally, the time to complete a farming run of tall birds with this method is significantly faster than having to do it all yourself, meaning more time to gather and utilize your loot, a more reasonable respawn of the tall birds themselves, and a bloody quick way to go from no meat or eggs to potentially 30 to 40 meat and 15 to 20 eggs ready to be munched. Because of their respawn time and year-round presence, I've always endorsed the cold-blooded murder of these things, and I still do. However, I do recommend just picking a side to place fossils, then just walling off the others. Don't do what I did here. It's just a total waste. On a side note, tree guardians. The bane of our existence is if we are farming wood. You can certainly use your catapults to fell them quicker so you can get back to chopping, but... I was hoping that, in doing so, the Guardians would turn aggro and be distracted, which would allow us to keep chopping as they die over yonder, but that isn't the case, sadly. Perhaps if I went a little further away and then came back, but by that point they probably would have been dead or close to it, so there really wouldn't be a point to do that. Whatever the case, even though I can't say I highly recommend using the resources on something like this, the catapults can get you back to your wood duties faster than if you didn't have them at all. So, there you go. But another I wondered about, if you happen to do it, bees. Specifically, killer bees. I mean, they do respond very fast and have easily killable and numerous numbers, but the heck are we gonna do with all these stingers? Yes, I know honey may drop too, but I really wouldn't be surprised if our game performance dropped after doing this after a while. Because so much is going to be on the ground. It is very easy to do. But it's really not worth it in my book. But here's a component I haven't discussed yet. Other characters using Winona's catapults to their advantage. Like Wickerbottom here. And her Birds of the World slash Sleepy Time Stories combination. Call the feathery winged beasts from above, put them to sleep, and then target them with the use of catapults for some bird loot. Heck, toss in a scarecrow and you may even get a canary now and then in the mix. It is certainly more efficient than I thought it was going to be, especially if you just keep spamming them birds, but I already know of far more effective ways of doing this. So is it useful? Sure. But do you really need bird loot that badly as to use resources to build something like this? Probably not. In similar fashion, on tentacles. Well, I'll tell you what, the combination works far better than I'd imagine it would, as your catapults actually end the hentai in mere seconds, netting you some pretty decent loot actually. Because tentacles don't respawn in the swamp if you didn't know, so this may end up being your only way to get some tentacle spikes and spots down the line in some later worlds. By extension, how about merms? Sure, if you want to, that is. In doing so though, I did discover that the catapults do not damage rundown houses, so you do not need to be overly cautious when placing your turrets down for this one. But if you're looking for fish and frog legs, well, you'll get it here. I guess this is one for you, but I really don't see any reason to, to be honest. It will end up just a waste of resources that could have been used elsewhere. Okay, but catapult on pangles. Could you test it, please? Sure, friend, who commented that same question on unrelated videos more than once. You can certainly wipe the little demons out of existence. But again, why? There's literally no need to. Just remember though, do not underestimate the power of pangles. How about bats? Certainly, but doing it this way is not the way to go. They spawn way too slowly, can potentially eat your loot, and the numbers here are not efficient enough to warrant the build. 
But head on down under and find yourself a bundle of bat caves. And things get far more interesting. Now this is more like it's... The bats stand no chance, by the way, and you'll have a couple dozen dead in seconds. And then you'll soon be walking away with more poop and bat wings than you know what to do with. Quick, easy, and hardly any setup needed. Now that's a good potential farm. But we have a problem, folks. Our next guest doesn't play by the rules. Splue monkeys and their shadowy counterparts can walk right through fossils. But thankfully, end tables can nullify that. Careful though, mobs can still slip by if they are pushed through. So don't keep your guard fully down for this one. Because Splunkies are pain in the butt in every way imaginable. Even if you are the one that's supposed to be in control for Pete's sake. The farm does work. You just need to do it and build it better than I did here. And the banana munchers will be feeling your wrath whenever you want. You know what doesn't work though? Not even in the slightest. Rock lobsters. It doesn't matter how you set it up, what level they happen to be, or if you lend a hand as well. You are never gonna be able to farm these things with Winona's catapults involved. Ever. Slurtles and Snurtles, on the other hand, are a different story. Yes, the fact that they hide in their shells makes things a bit tedious, but at least they don't bloody regenerate when under there. But my notes for this one are simple. Don't do what I did, and instead just make a straight line of fossils protecting your catapults like we've seen in the other methods so far, and remember to initiate combat now and then with more than one to keep your catapults engaged. Does it work? Certainly. Is it what I would call a farm? No, not really. But there you have it everyone. A guide bringing us all on a journey through the death and destruction of almost every mob in the constants. And whether or not Winona's newest toys can actually make murdering them all the more useful. We found that a number of the farming methods are still viable, even with the change up. But also, that many continue to lag behind, even with the new additions. Thanks for watching everyone. Have fun building your own farms out there, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.